right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CADCAST episode number 509, live from the Bloodstained Killing Fields here in Garden City, New York, at the Long Island Retro Show. As always, I'm your host, GPD, and I am joined by a man who is so into retro, he's wearing underwear from 1993, Wombat. It's more like a waistband from 1993, going to get technical. And fringes. Yes. That's nice. how my wife likes it. <laughs> now you can't say things like that since your wife is sitting <laughs> right upstairs. <laughs> Hi, Shipwreck. Welcome. Hello. Man who's actually into real, like, hardcore retro. Sure. Not we have to mention that we're doing this inside of an IMAX theater. Yeah, this is very new for us. Uh, for the people listening at home and don't know what's going on, we're at the Long Island Retro Show here in Long Island. Um, and we're in a planetarium, IMAX, an IMAX planetarium, I think. And we're at the bottom of the stage, and we're basically just looking up at the people. At the thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> right. There's, the people are waiting outside. Uh, they can't, couldn't get in. Uh, everybody's looking at my bald spot. They Which one? Maybe, yeah. Maybe you can find it because they're looking down at us. Um, but we're excited to be here. A new venue this year. Obviously, a lot more stuff going on at the show this year because we're not as well attended here in the uh, auditorium. Well, I think there's there's probably the same amount of people in here that there was last year, but the theater is four times the size as the theater of last year. Right. So it's like, you know. It's gotta, full. It's full Move for on. us. Move on. Right. <laughs> it's full right. of love. What else do you need? Right. And people are still coming in. That's how exciting it is here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a great show here. We've been buying a lot of uh, tchotchkes. I bought a Battlestar Galactica figure. Um, what was it called? The Imperial... I don't know what you bought. Yeah, you bought it, not us. I don't know. I had this figure when I was a kid, and I saw it. The Imperious Leader. I don't know if you know about that. It's pretty it looks like it has a lot of articulation. It's like it's just like a old lady in a dress, basically, an alien old lady. I don't know, but I remember. I can, I can this. picture you as a child saying to your mom, "Please, I need the old lady in a dress toy." I think I only had one Battlestar Galactica figure, and this was it. I and I know I had this because I know what it, she looks like naked underneath this. <laughs> There's nothing creepy about that at all. No, it was weird. It was very weird. But ten bucks here at uh, Long Island Retro, so that's that's pretty exciting. Shipper got some stuff too. I, yeah, I bought some TurboGrafx CD games. Mm-hmm. And a second mortgage on your house to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Not $10? There were deals. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, usually at the start of our shows, we talk about the feedback from last week's show. So uh, let's get right into it. Yeah, so last week we talked about Shipwreck most definitely being in NBA Playgrounds as a playable character that's going to be nine feet tall and ratings of ten for all stats, right? Is that Some of that may happen. <laughs> Some of that may happen. Nine that's feet like tall. the new NBA Jam that came out, basically. And we are on a mission to get Shipwreck, who actually plays basketball very well, to get him into the game because we think that it's possible that we could make it happen. And appropriate. And appropriate. So Bickle has to say, I consider Wombat to already be in a game since the Mass Effect multiplayer was called Project Wombat. So I pose this to you guys since you two are, have actually been in, well, you've actually really been in a game already, and Shipwreck will be. Does that count? No. So Wombat, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> but Mass Effect, what was it? Mass Effect? Two. Two? It's a good one. They were working on a multiplayer mode for the game, and they wanted to make it accessible to a certain type of gamer, and that the prototype gamer, is not a joke, was Wombat. The, one of the developers on the game was a big fan of the CAD cast. I like to think she still is. She is, but she doesn't work there anymore. No. So, sort of right, the tense. Anyway, so they called that multiplayer mode Project Wombat in development. And Wombat did actually like the mode. Yes. She was, she was like, very excited to show us because she showed it at E3 that year. But and I don't think that counts as you being in a video game. Well, no, but, you know, I'm more influential in the history of video game development than the two of you are. And that, I'll it. that I'll give you. Mm-hmm. That you, you, you can win that argument. It was a game changer, literally. Right. <laughs> It's very hard to do the show when you have to look like straight up at the ceiling to and see I'm, the people I'm, in the audience. I've decided to stare at you the whole time. Is where we're going with this? Is that's where my eyeline is? That's fine. I hope that doesn't bother you. I could stare at Shipwreck a little that's, bit. That's my, fine. My head doesn't really move that way. Stare at Cheapy. <laughs> right. So we don't have any more news to report on the NBA playground front. 
No. Not at the moment. Not at no. the moment. Soon. Stay tuned. Wheels are turning. Right. Things are happening. Go on, Wanda. Read some more show feedback. Yes, sir. Regarding uh, the new, was it Le- Lord of the Rings Shadow of War microtransactions? Which For, I totally guessed last episode. Yes, you guessed that correctly. That's where I was going. We I were talking about uh, Injustice 2 last week, uh, having microtransactions, loot boxes, and we were wondering if every Warner Brothers game is going to have that now because that's how these games make money. And Shipwreck said, yes, they will announce it. And then a day later, they announced it. So He's good. Good work. You should be proud. I'm drinking water. I noticed that. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> so Forever Joe 20 had to say, great episode, love the show. Now that Middle Earth, Shadow of War has microtransactions, I've heard many people say that this turns them away from the game completely. Some even to the point that they're not going to buy it. Just wanted to hear y'all's opinion on this and if it will change your decision as to pick up or not pick up when the game comes out. So were you pl- ever planning on getting this today comes out? I think I was. We put it in E3 and it was really good. Um, a lot of buttons, though. A lot of buttons. Very complicated. This game was so complicated that they, when they were dem- demoing at E3, they had a big room set up with stations you could play the game. Every station, it's like probably 30 stations. Every station had a person who worked at Warner Brothers to sit with you and explain the game to you while you're playing it. For like 45 and it, minutes. For 45, it was, and it was still hard. Like, I still died yeah. instantly with this person getting paid. We were playing it on the third day, though. They probably weren't coaching us as well at that point. Right, they had enough of everybody's stuff at that point. Um, so does will the microtransactions affect your decision? I mean, I don't really mind, like, loot boxes. I play a lot of Overwatch. And you do? And I'm pretty addicted to the whole loot box situation. I don't buy the loot boxes. I've never, never paid money for them, but I like the idea of opening them when I earn them um, and I realize that these games are now like a service and they like to have money coming in all the time so they can say they're going to add new content and you don't have to buy maps and things so as long as I don't have to buy maps and I don't have to buy the loot boxes and they're still making the content I'm satisfied I don't think you're going to have to buy well they said already that these that the items in the Payable loot boxes is all going to be stuff you can unlock through gameplay. Right. But then again, in Injustice, you could play the game to unlock all the shaders. It would just take about a thousand years. So it's probably the same system. Yeah, and you don't really, they haven't really patched in anything for free yet with that game with Injustice yet. Like you know, all the characters you still have to buy. Obviously, you know, Dark Side, who was the pre-order bonus, is still six bucks. Right. So it would be nice if they added in some new like levels for free because that's probably what that game is lacking. Right, is some variety in the in the background. Right. Well, Strange Action Man added on to that uh, question, basically asked, "Are games like Overwatch at fault for loot boxes in single player games like Shadow of War?" I mean, when you have a big success, people want to copy it, and I don't know. That just doesn't bother me. I'm much more. I, I don't think off. it's. Totally that, though. I think it's just they need to find revenue streams for these games. Yeah, and I you can't make a triple A game anymore and expect people expect, to pay $60. And there's a, there's a lot of them, right? So if you make one and it fails and you spend all that money, like you need to have a backup plan here to hook the whales that are that are that do buy your game and play it, right? And I don't blame Overwatch, I blame FIFA and Madden. Wouldn't they predate it Every with their card packs? Everybody. Well, uh, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, FIFA made know. makes all the money because of those card packs. As long as these guys support the game after the fact, and you don't have to buy maps and season passes, I'm fine with the loot box situation. Which doesn't, I doubt, will be the case with this game. Yeah, they're gonna probably milk it. Yeah, they're gonna have like, oh, you want to play nine more story modes? That'll be another forty dollars. Yeah. So. Um. All right. Let's move on to, uh, well, we have kids in the audience, so let's call this... Watch this, fellow people. Right. Uh, this is where we talk about movies and TV shows that we've been watching. Uh, I just, uh, Mrs. Chibi and I both saw Planet of the, War of the, War for the Planet of the Apes? Is that what it's called? War of? War for? War, War Planet yeah. Apes? Um, you guys haven't watched it. I have not I've seen I've seen the it. first two movies, but not this one. Did you see the first two movies, Wombat? Mm-hmm. I actually haven't. I haven't watched any of the new new ones. Why not? They're good. I don't. I just haven't gotten around to it. I saw the original one. This one is mostly apes getting shot at in like a war scenario. It's very well titled. That, that, I yeah, I was going to say that sounds like what this movie. So is. you're saying that it is a war 
Yes. On the planet featuring apes. It's Earth. <laughs> it's Earth the whole time? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Damn I, you. I you blew it up. I think a movie like this where it is supposed to have an emotional impact, I have a hard time connecting with the apes and really bonding did, with Did their, you not cry at all? I did not cry at all. Usually I'm a big sucker for these sad movies where something... Where might, monkeys die. Where, well... Anything dies, really, or anything sad happens. It's like your whole, like if a custom Netflix shirt or search, like, it says dead monkey movies. Right. Or like long distance phone commercials make me cry sometimes. With monkeys. But this one, no. Like, I don't, I just didn't hook me in. I just, it was, I don't know. There was like a, a comic relief ape in the movie, too. And it was, I don't know. The tone was sort of weird for like this serious war thing with it. There were apes and then funny apes in it, too. And people getting, apes getting murdered. All apes are funny. So I don't know. I, I I didn't love it as much as uh, I think it had like a ninety six Rotten Tomatoes or something. Yeah. But I don't know. What's this next fun filled thing <laughs> that you were watching or listening to? Oh, I started listening to the My Favorite Murder podcast, and I listened to it last night. I went and visited Cheapy at his house because Shipwreck was there and we hung out. But it was dark on my way home, and I'm driving alone, and I'm listening to the My Favorite Murder podcast. And as much as I like the podcast, I'm going to say I don't recommend doing that. Because I could not sleep for like three hours <laughs> after I got home because I needed to calm myself down from listening. It's For those who don't know, it's, it's a podcast where the two hosts just give you the history of some really awful murderer that actually existed. And each week they talk about one or two actual cr- killers. And it's just Why? creepy. Why do you want to listen to that? I don't Because it's interesting and creepy all at the same time. So, I don't know, because I did. It's a good show. It just yes. was, le- this, the most recent episode is particularly... Uh, murdery? Murdery. Some yeah. murderer from Germany at the turn of the last century who killed like 30 people, mostly children. Yeah, fun times. So, yeah, sounds light. Light, light listening on the on the drive home from your house. You weird. Oh, yeah. Time for video games. Yes. Huh? Oh yeah, we can. Why at the retro game festival? I don't know. Uh, New game releases. That's yeah, let's all, right, all right. Yeah, we, we played one last night. Uh, it was after you left, Wombat. But Chiefy <sighs> and I played some Lawbreakers. This is the new Cliff Blazinski uh, first-person shooter. Yes. Hero based, I would say. Maybe. What does we, that mean? It means you pick characters like an Overwatch. And they do, oh, and they have, they do different right. things. They have different abilities. Gotcha. Like one guy can fly more. One guy has a bigger gun. That type of situation. It's very fast. It reminds me of like Quake with flying, basically. Um, I'm too old for that game. You you cannot, did a good job. There was a I one captured of the ball. ball. Yeah, yeah there, I captured the flag with balls. And I captured the, the ball. ball was inside another ball. And yes. you went in that ball, and you grabbed that ball. I think and then you took were, it to where the ball was supposed to go. People were focused on shooting each other, and since I wasn't going to really do too well at that, I focused on carrying the ball. Did you have a ball? It was all right. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go that far. But it was okay. 30 bucks, I think, right? It's like a yeah, I think point. so. I, That's what the paper says. It seems pretty good. Trust the paper. Yeah. Um, what else came out this week? Hellblade? I don't really know anything about that. That's the game where if you die a lot... I don't you, think that's true, Is though. that true or not? Does it, there are people here. So does Hellblade erase your game save after you die too many times? By a show of hands, let, let us know. Nobody knows. No one knows, right? That's what I read, too. And then people got angry about it. And then other people said to stop whining. And You're I... talking to you? Yeah, mostly to me directly, but about things that aren't related to Hellblade. And, yeah, that's all I got. No, it's from Ninja Theory. Uh, the Heavenly Sword people... They made what else they make? Sounds good. The, the, the Devil May Cry remake. Yeah. Um, Some, enslaved. Somebody said enslaved. 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 Yeah, enslaved is a good game. And Disney Infinity, they made like the racing. Did they make the racing one? I don't know. I don't know. The racist, but it's supposed to be really good. The racist one. <laughs> you remember that Disney game that was racist? The Song of the South. Yeah, expansion I got that pack? expansion pack. Yeah. it was very hard to find. Uncle Remus was the best player in the game, though. <laughs> Uh, also out this week was the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2. This is some Mega Man X games. I think four of them for $20. You guys in on that? Uh, X games? What did you say? Mega Man <laughs> yes, X it's Mega games? Man Skateboarding. The Mega Man X. I would play Mega well, Man Skateboarding before I would play that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so that's a no. Yeah, I think I'm not going to play not, that. Not in on that. No. Is that the ones with the dog? With Roll, yes. There you go. He knows. Mm-hmm. I'm hip. I know what the kids like. That's about it for no. new releases. There's more. There's not? There's more? What's, yeah. What else is here? Res Infinite is out on PC this week. Oh, that's why you're wearing that shirt? No. It's because I wore my NHL 94 shirt last year at this thing. So um, You had to pick a different shirt then. I had to pick a different shirt. All right. Um, yeah, so that's out on PC. It has uh, VR support if you have Oculus. Um, I think just Oculus? I'm not sure, but I don't know. It's a good game. If you haven't played Res. When does play. that other game that we were playing, are you allowed to talk about that game yet? The one that we were, the one we were playing? No, not yet. Nidhogg. Never mind. That's next week. Right. Yeah. Don't say the other one. <laughs> um, all right, now it's time for multi-platforming and Wombat's Overwatch onslaught and other news and stuff. This is where I make Wombat talk about Overwatch, which is a game he doesn't like at all and makes fun of. But because I write the outline, I get to be in the sections and torture you every week. That's works for me. Yeah. So the summer games are out for Overwatch now. Brought back Lucio Ball and a lot of good skins, a lot of fun beach theme skins. I know you're very excited about it. Which one are you looking for the most, do you think? I'm looking forward to the one that has the guy in the bathing suit and a cowboy hat. Oh, he got one. Good for you. Yeah, see? You saw it. I pay attention to the oh. planet. Um, also, in other Overwatch news, they are having a deathmatch mode, finally. So you can actually play. You don't have to play. Hey, so the, uh, no there, more objective. No eh? more objectives. So there wasn't a deathmatch mode? There was no yeah. deathmatch mode before. It was all objective stuff. And that so is it team deathmatch or is it... I think it's free for all. So is there going to be a team deathmatch? One thing at a time. If they can figure that out. Seriously, how is, this, how is this game like... A, was this ever a full price game? I'm so baffled by this. This is why I do this. So it's a multiplayer only game. Yes. It has no story. It has a story. It has like eight characters. The story, you just have to go on YouTube to find the story. Yeah, you have to buy the comic books. You don't have to buy the or, comic Or books. watch the movies. Go to just the library. Just Google search, movies about Overwatch characters, NSFW, and that's what you want to watch. <laughs> so it's got what? It's got eight characters. Eight? What? What is it, 12? I don't know. It's like 20-something characters. I, I, all I know is the guy who like shoots music at people. Right. And wears lime green. Lucio. Yeah. He's good. I bet he's awesome. Um, <laughs> I almost wore my Lucio shirt. Wasn't he in Streets of Rage 3? Yes. That's what I thought. <laughs> Blade, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm retro. So, good good but, retro callback. Thank you. That. That's I why saw. we're here. Yeah, I want to have. Yeah, nice. I want to show my cred. Um. <laughs> Yes. Well, look, they I'm made a good game. By this whole game. What's good? I don't understand. They it has keep one... adding stuff to it, and you don't have. No, to it's not that they it. keep adding stuff to it. They just are eventually going to make it a complete game. Fine. Well, you can't complain about that. No man's Overwatch. Better than no, we'll get. To, we'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, what else we got here in multi-platforming and news? We played stuff. some of the NBA, NBA Live 18 demo. Right, this NBA Live like crazy. has been like, failing pretty hard yeah. for the last couple of years because NBA, the 2K series, just makes so much money, and they EA said they can't even compete with them, so they took like a lot of years off. They took two years off for this one, yeah. The last one was 16, so they took right. 17 well, off. They took a few years off before well, that. Before that, too, yeah. yeah. Um, but then suddenly this one, they're giving a $20 discount if you pre-order it, Which so is- it's $40. Which is weird for a video game in 2017. And then on top of that, like if you get it at Best Buy and have the Gamer Club thing, then it's 32 And then on top of that, they're giving you a $10 gift card right. as well. So $22. Yeah, $22. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Eventually, they'll just pay you. You to can't afford not game. to buy the game at this point. Which I did. I, I bought it. After we played the demo, of you did it. Yeah, I pre- I pre-ordered. When it. did Why you not? order it? You, you just like went on. When your you phone? guys were playing, yeah. When you and Ty were playing Overwatch for six hours, right? Um, <laughs> but objective A, get objective A. <laughs> we were playing Lucio. We got to get objective A. Lucio ball, <laughs> just shooting the ball. So Why is everyone played... Lucio? Get <laughs> no, objective we're, A. We're past Overwatch, Wombat. Go. <laughs> right, we made it. Past. Okay. We made it past. NBA. Don't Lu- go back. Go is, forward. Is, is Lucio an NBA? You could make him. <laughs> I think you could make him. There's a creative character. There's the whole a story thing, mode. This, there's a story mode, and there's like, there's a lot of FMV in there. Like, yeah, FMV is hot now. <laughs> right. It's making there's, a comeback. Uh, there's uh, Stephen A., the ESPN Stephen guy. Stephen A. Smith. Yes. Yeah. Uh, him and the other guy that he talks to. 
the not Stephen A guys. Real yeah. sports guys. Yeah. Okay. They're in there and they... The Southern guy? They're Southern talking guy? like about your creative character like he's a real person for like nice. a long time. And right. Way too long. But do they say his name or they, it's no. not that good? The one, I think, maybe. Yeah. yeah well, we didn't change his name because we were... Yeah, you know, we didn't. We had to move quickly. Right. But gameplay-wise, it's, it's competent. No. Seems fine. It looks good. Looks like real people moving on a basketball court. They're not just spinning around things. in the middle of the court anymore. Yeah. This yeah. is the one with WNBA too, right? Yes. Okay. Can you play WNBA teams against NBA teams? No. They should patch that in. Right. Maybe. Sure. And mascots. Well, always mascots. Yeah. I mean, their big hook for the game was, okay, it's $20 off if you pre-order it, which is pretty unusual. And we have WNBA. Mm-hmm. And creating a character and Stephen A. Smith. Right. But I agree. They should allow the men to play the women. Yeah, I think that would be why cool. Not? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a video game. Right. Who cares? It's not, you know, it'd be fun. Uh, and some other news and some gaming news. This is LI retro related in a way. So the police arrested a fake arcade company in California. I don't know if you read about this. Um, this, there were six people who had a business making like fake Pac-Man cabinets, all different Namco. For some reason, just Namco ca- uh, cabinets. Um, so they would make unlicensed cabinets, and then they would load in all the retro, like you know, three thousand games. Also, so they were like double violation, I guess, like on the cabinet itself and putting in all the games. But then the weird thing is, so you think, okay, whatever. How much money is in there, like making fake arcade cabinets? Is that doesn't seem like something that's going to really like set the world on fire. But when they arrested these guys, they found $1.2 million in cash on the premises. Like, how is that? People what? like Pac-Man. I don't know. Why do they have that just at their house? The cash? Like, right. Why are, Did they just not go to the bank that day? Well, what, if you go to the bank, on? then... That's just one day's earnings, you think, yeah. from these guys? Yeah, one yeah. That's what I was... Yeah. A week. I was saying they were going to go on, like, Friday or something. I'm going to say the people making counterfeit arcade games may not trust banks that much. <laughs> but, and they, but how are they getting paid? They're, like cash? they're selling these things online. No, you don't get paid cash. They online. go to like a cash, a check cashing place. <laughs> so they're they're having people mail them checks. Yes, and they go to a check cashing place. With, you know, because they they don't ask questions. They just uh-huh. take their percentage. And you you had enough people that bought these counterfeit machines with a check right. uh, online. Yes. Right. So that they could get just cash. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Do the math. No, I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but. I, yeah. yeah, it's strange. Like, there's plenty of these companies that are out there, but most of them, like, have licensing deals and stuff like that. For right. This stuff. But, and apparently, like, Namco's office is in the same city as where these guys were operating. So maybe they were, like, got some stuff out, like, the back door of, of Namco. I think this is actually the same place that the Dreamcade people, Dream Arcades. They, oh. They're not these people. Okay. I looked that up right away. <laughs> 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 um, but they're in that. I think they're in Santa Clara, California, as well. So it, it must be a big arcade scene out there. Home of the fake arcade games. Interesting. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just reading this now. This next story. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll see how I can do this in <laughs> a family-friendly way. Remember, your son's here. I know. Um, <laughs> so there's a League of Legends pro who basically got benched recently because he said he was having too many. Hmm. Sensual pleasures. I guess, you know, it's pretty hard to imagine that video games are providing, usually they provide the opposite problem. You play too many video games, you don't talk to any women or men. Well, if you're, you know, you're making them rolling in the dough from, well, you're a champion. If you're a League of Legends champion, then you have groupies, I guess. And this guy is saying that his bad play is responsible. You should know you have groupies. Yeah, you have one. She's right up there. Right. Group, group, yeah, group E. Um, so yeah, so he's gonna be work on abstinence now to get his League of Legends game back on track. That is also why I am doing this. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, I thought that was that was a little unusual. Um, here's a question from from Cider. 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 Um, he wants to know uh, with games like Night Trap selling out from that's I guess limited run. It's a limited yeah. mm-hmm. gaming group. Yeah. Uh, selling out so fast on the PS4. Are '90s uh, FMV games the next hot retro game trend? Maybe. I no. Think just all those limited game. <laughs> 
all the limited run stuff sells mm-hmm. out, obviously. Okay. This one is just one of the biggest profile games that they've had. Right. Like this has it's a, a real huge retro video game. game like history and lore to it and everything. Yeah, uh, I, I am interested in playing it again when I mean it's a terrible I would game. get it digitally. I know it is bad. I owned it. I played it, mm-hmm. but it'd be interesting to watch. Oh, I, I just bought it yesterday again. Yeah, I know. It's a terrible game though. <laughs> something about being able to see it not blurry and without load times that are five minutes long is something <laughs> is interesting to me. I would rather have Sewer Shark personally, but you know. Right, that's, that's not a, a fan favorite. That's no. one man's opinion. What about Marky Mark's? Uh, the, oh, that yeah. Or something? There was supposed to be a whole bunch of those. Yeah. They, they just got that and crisscross, right? Yeah. Make, that, make that the, the video. Make yeah, the video. It was crisscross, make the video, and Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch yeah. make the video. Oh, oh yep, that's excess. right. Excess was another one. There you go. Oh, CNC. there's a fourth one. People are just naming bands now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this limited run game thing seems like a pretty good business. They just they make. Box games of games that they you can't buy. They make a limited anymore. run. Well, they're games, games that are out digitally, <laughs> or out, games that just released digitally. Yeah, yeah. out digitally, yeah. and then they charge you either like a hundred percent more than they are, <laughs> or. But then people they all sell out, and then pe- resellers buy them, and I mean you buy every one basically, but not to resell, yeah. but just to hold on right, to. Right. Right. But then you just go on eBay and you see like they're selling for three times the price. Don't buy too many, or run out of room in the basement. It'll be okay. <laughs> There's plenty of room. We can have a, an annex. <laughs> um, so no. So to answer this guy's question, no, I don't think FMV games. Are I don't know. I mean, if this, I think if this sells well digitally, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it with another. Well, one what's of those the other one though? Sewer Shark. No, so, but they make the modern the, ones. Like, Sewer Shark is like a three dollar game. Like I like Sewer Shark. Well, I know you like it, <laughs> but nobody's going to be buying it. No. Well, mm. there's a game called Her Story, which is all. FMV. Yeah, but that's new. We're that's talking new. about retro. I'm trying to think of other good retro FMV games that. Wirehead? Are you getting to Wirehead? I don't, I don't even think I know that one. It's where you controlled a like middle aged man. He had a wire in his head, and somebody was chasing him, and like he would like step outside and like step on a skateboard, and you had to like go down the sidewalk with him. This sounds made up. That that is the level of FMV game. That's one of the better FMV games. Yeah. All right, let's move on to That's why Microsoft. I Willie Beamish. What's that? Sure. <laughs> right. Uh, at JG Siv, Siv asks a question. Siv. He wants to know. He says, "Is Microsoft was Microsoft Play Anywhere a mistake? Play Anywhere is the service where if you buy a game on Xbox, a certain game on Xbox or a PC, you get a code for the other, you know, the other platform yeah. that you didn't buy it on." Uh, wouldn't it be better to trap users in an ecosystem than give them a platform that has Steam? So he's thinking by getting games onto a PC, people will just figure out that Steam is there and then just ignore the Microsoft Store. I think people know that Steam is there already. It's pretty popular. Pretty popular service. Yeah, I and and well, I think the other argument there that he's possibly making is that people will buy a PC then and not go buy an Xbox. But I don't think that exists too much either. I don't think that exists too much either, and I think the big play really is, but they're not buying something from Sony, and that's really all that matters to Microsoft. It's not about it's not about beating Steam, and it's not about selling the most Xbox consoles. It's about getting someone to buy one less PlayStation 4. I don't think that's it. Maybe like a multi-platform <laughs> game. Well, just to talk to convince somebody to, if you're going to buy a multi-platform okay. game, maybe there's a reason to not buy it on PlayStation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah. that's – they want you to buy it on the Xbox, though. They don't care if you buy it on a PlayStation. I think they would rather see Sony fail than them succeed. What wow, are you talking dark. about? <laughs> <laughs> You think they really hate each other that much? Yeah, I think they'd rather I burn. They just want the money. They'd rather burn down the whole building than save the kitten. That, that I just weird. made that analogy up, and it makes no sense. That sounds weird. To me. <laughs> that sounds very strange to me. <laughs> um, Nintendo. Nintendo announced a new Nintendo, a new new Nintendo 3DX, 3DS XL, the uh, Metroid edition. They make a lot. Of is it new or is it just it has? No, a, it's a, the a, new Nintendo. You know, the, the, it's called the new Nintendo 3DS. That's the name of the thing. It's the same 3DS XL that's the out there. Okay. 
But it just has like a Metroid sticker on it. This is not the on newest it. one that they. The newest one they have is the new Nintendo 2DS XL. I know there's a 2DS. So and we've 3DS. gone back to the one before that. Okay. It's still called new, and it's still new, and now it has Samus on it. So it's not a new new. It's just the new. They ran out of room on the box. It gotcha. says new on the box still. I'm pretty sure. Right. Because that's the name of the product. Right. Are you confused? <laughs> it's new. The. Anyway. So yeah, it doesn't come with a game. Just. Right. It doesn't, doesn't come, come with Metroid? It doesn't come with Metroid. It doesn't come with an AC adapter because you only get an AC adapter in the new 2DS. So if I buy Not it, in the new 3DS. But does the 2DS adapter work on the 3DS? Hey, thank you. <laughs> There's a yes. I'll uh, take your word for it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Nintendo, they'll sell out of these. Oh, they'll sell out of these. It's a the terrible they decision, and they still sell out. Of They're them. very good at this. They know what pictures to put on. Yeah, they just have to put a picture of the right thing on there, and just crank a new one out every couple months. Oh, look! It's Pikachu wearing a, a kind, Link hat. I got to buy of, four yeah. of them. Right. <laughs> it's kind of odd that they went 3ds with this, though, since they just put out their, the, the new 2ds. 2DS. <laughs> Maybe they found like a crate of these in a warehouse somewhere, and like, yeah, just paint them up. Yeah, ship them out. Rawhide. <laughs> right. Uh, here's a question from Tom. Let's just go with Tom because the rest of this is too confusing to read. What franchise would you like to see Nintendo acquire and then put a Nintendo spin on? Go into detail, please. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very specific. Well, answer. I'm wearing a blue shirt. <laughs> what, what, what franchise should Nintendo acquire? Is, is like, I guess this is just a hypothetical. So. Red Dead Redemption. Okay, and and what would Nintendo's Red Dead Redemption be? Would it be like Breath of the Wild, but good? Oh, you can't say that in this room. You're going to get tomatoes thrown at you. Yeah, it's okay. IMAX. What? <laughs> IMAX? <laughs> you think they're going to be afraid to throw tomatoes? They, they might damage the screen? Yeah, exactly. You think you're safe? I don't know. Um, I don't, Nintendo doesn't even put out... Like their own franchises that that they own that I, often, yeah, often, I often enough. For if me. they could get like, if Capcom would allow them to like take Mega Man type thing, or Konami would let them take Castlevania, and Castlevania just, like, maybe make the games. Like they wouldn't have to be Nintendo owned, but joint venture there where yeah. there's actually games being made of these properties. That'd be good. It seems like there's a lot of money that. Could what about be made Nintendo there. and Capcom and Disney working together to do like a whole new version of Disney Afternoon games, like a new DuckTales? There's new. There is a new, new DuckTales. Yeah, I watched it this morning. It's good. Nice. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just admit that in front of everybody. Whatever. Okay. It's got s- Fine. race cars, spaceships, and airplanes. It was it was a duck blur? Yeah. I knew that was coming. All right, let's move on to Sony <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, no Man's Sky, a very uh, controversial release, just had a major update, uh, adding basic multiplayer, a story mode, improved graphics, improved everything pretty much, yeah. supposedly. Um, a 30-hour story. Is that enough to get you back? We all own it, right? Yeah. We all sort of got See, it also it. it all came out like the same week that this was last year. Because mm-hmm. I remember falling asleep watching you play it on your couch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, it came out. The day, the day. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't, I'm going to give it another shot, I think. I would check it out. I checked out the last update, but really for like a limited period of time. It just it, it didn't really hook me very quickly. But uh, I'm interested. I mean, I own the game. It's not like I have to do anything to try it other than download the update. Do you think that all the blowback that they had received, all the negative commentary, you know, and there was so much of it when the game came out, do you think they could have avoided that if they just called this game early access? I guess they didn't really... PlayStation didn't have any program like that. They still don't. They well, that's don't. why... Um, what's his face? Player Unknown. That's why Battlegrounds is going to the Xbox One. Because they have an early access. Because they have an early access. And so, they paid him a lot of money. And that, Well, that helps, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, well, you know, but still, that's why he said he's doing it, because he could do it on early access. You know, if you released a game, if they released No Man's Sky even at $40 and called it early it access, okay, right? I think people, yeah, because then a year later they would have said, oh, and now it's finished. It's not early access right. anymore. Look how complain. awesome we are. When it says early access on there, you don't really have much right to complain. Once you, well, yeah, people you know it's will not still done. complain. That's what Right, that's but what you sort of do. lose your edge. Yeah. I feel. I've lost my edge years ago. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, oh, like we're at, we're at like the keg bag already. I like did, we were, did we want to talk about Player Unknown? Oh, yeah. Hey, you I, played I play, it. I played I, some of that. 
Right. You guys play Player Unknown's Battlegrounds at all? Anybody? It's not a really more retro thing. Some people play it. It's um, got a retro feel. Sort of? Yeah, why not? If you say so. I don't know. I'm trying to tie it all together. Um, if you don't know, that's a game where it's you versus 98 other people, and they drop you into a map that's sort of like uh, Hunger Games, and you just pick up weapons that you find along the way, and it's every man for himself. Well, there's also squad modes, too. Um, and then the last person standing wins. But it's become a real sen- a sensation on Twitch. People love watching other people play it. I enjoy it. I like it when you play during my lunch break. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm very bad at it, and I get scared very easily. That's why I like watching you play. Yeah. <laughs> but we made we made ship play yesterday. Yeah, and I'm not a mouse and keyboard player, so we were playing. You didn't do that well. I, I, they I, did patch I got, eight, I got 18th. I thought that was You can good hide enough. a That's lot. Good. I'm good at hiding. Yeah. And you can get pretty far just on hiding. Yeah, I, it's an interesting game. I don't know if it's my it's for me necessarily. But it's still. thirty bucks. It's early. I like that it's you play around and then it's quick. Like well, it doesn't take very long, especially if you die early. If you go to the end, though, it takes a while. I got the eighteenth. That was pretty much. I could see what the end would be like. Right. It was a lot like what I was doing, except you kill more the guys. Yeah. yeah. Less hiding and more shooting. Yeah. But no, no it's, it's cool. I'm looking forward when it comes to Xbox. I think. That, this fall. Yeah. I know you can play with a controller on the Is PC it this now. fall or is it next year? I thought it was this fall. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, CAG bag? Do we CAG have, bag. Do we have the ability to take questions here, too? Can we take questions here? Oh, you do? Okay. Well, let's do... You want to do a couple of these? A couple of those. Here, and we'll I'll do take that. Some, some questions. Why are you taking it? Why are you taking it? Oh, I was going to go into the fun. crowd. I'm not supposed to go into the crowd. No, how anyway. are you going to answer the questions if you're out in the crowd? I don't know. I was, the mic would be there. <laughs> I'm still talking to that mic. Okay. Let's answer a few more yeah. listener questions, and then we can have live questions. Sure. Uh, Christian Spicer. Who? Writes in and asks, what's the most expensive game you've <laughs> ever purchased? <laughs> and what's the most valuable game in your collection? These questions are probably both for Shipwreck. Yeah. You go first. Me? Yes. I'm thinking, Most, well, I'm I thinking. didn't have a Neo Geo. I, I didn't. I was never really into collecting games. So I don't think didn't I ever, you have Steel Battalion, or am I making that up? Oh, I probably bought. Well, I no. You know what? I did buy like Dance Dance Revolution. I got into that for a little while, so I was importing some of those games, and then I got like my PlayStation modded so I could play it. That was like the biggest investment I made on just playing a single game. I think you know, modding a system and then. Buying the imports. That sounds like I don't yeah. remember the price because it was a while ago. Like Five thousand dollars. No, it wasn't. That. I know it was normal. <laughs> normal. normal price. Um, most valuable. I don't know that I have anything. I have a Bally Astro K that doesn't work. I don't think that's probably worth anything. And a bunch of games. Um, I have a Telstar Ranger from 1977 that works. I don't know that that's worth anything. Um, yeah. Chip, do you have any valuable things? Is it something you just bought today? No, that, no it wasn't no. today. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably Panzer Dragoon Saga. Um, and I spent some money on that. <laughs> <laughs> like how many zeros? Oh, no, no. Two just zeros. just two zeros. But, like, but the top five hundo? Well, how much? Five? five? A little bit less than that. Uh, I, so I, think, go, I, think I, I think I spent 400 on it. That's Didn't you, is that the one you got in North Carolina? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I remember stories. Yep. Nice. But I don't know. It's hard to, like, if you go back, you guys don't have that many retro games at your houses, though. No, yeah. I'm not really They're all retro. worth a ton of money now. I bet. Yeah. Every Everything I pull out, it's like, really, this is, this is worth like 60 bucks? This was just a common game. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't think that they would be worth anything because they made so much. Have you looked around out here? Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, <laughs> at, at all these vendors, you're like, but you have wow. to have the box and everything. It's like you, tw- there was a. I, I, well, I don't know. We get on the vendor or whatever. I don't know if it was a good price or not. But there was a Turtles in Time because Christian Spicer was looking for that. Yeah, in box, it was two hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, here's a follow-up question uh, from Atlas Shrugged eighty. He wants to know how Shipwreck tracks down all those retro video game stores. Is there a secret to finding them? I mean, what, you just look on Google Maps, right? I look on Yellow Pages, actually. That's a thing? That What's is a it? thing. Like the book or the Not website? the book. Oh, okay. I don't bring the book with me. Oh. Uh, but there's a Yellow Pages app that it's pretty easy to just like type in you let your specific do categories. The uh, yes, on my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, Why is that better than Google? I don't know. These Google guys, has these more, guys are so retro. They I, just, I think Google just has more results, and so it's more muddled. 
I see. Than, than Yellow Pages. I see. The Yellow Pages app. I also don't go to, I go to a lot of like bookstores, like in the thrift shop type things okay. that aren't necessarily the video game stores because then you don't pay video game store pricing. Yeah, I went to a flea market last week. I didn't, I thinking there might be something cool. I didn't see anything too amazing, but it might have been just too big a flea market. Is it the one from Flea Market Flip? No. Oh, there's one up here. I, yeah. I see it on on Flea Market Flip. Oh, you should you so should have Long told Island us Island something Flea Market. Mm, Tri County, maybe that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So yeah, yeah. that's the one I was in. So it shows what I know. Tri County Flea Market. That's where I was. I went did you there. Flip anything? I did not flip anything. We just we had to kill like 45 minutes, and that's where we were. And we're like, let's go check out this garbage. And that's basically what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and you left it there. You left the garbage <laughs> where you found it. <laughs> Uh, at Jigataco writes, everyone says nobody cares about backwards compatibility. All these retro system reissues and box OL emulators say different. Discuss. Do people really care? I think when people are buying a new console, it's a good excuse to like buy the next new console if it says it has backwards compatibility, even if they never use it. I think that it, people use it as a buying point, but in terms of actually using it, Maybe it's not used that much. I think it's going to be used more now that everything's digital, though. Like the way that Xbox is doing it, where you have all the the Xbox 360 games, you're more likely to just if it's on your hard drive and it's in there in your list of games to go in and play something. Right. Um, you not still have the discs anymore. Right. So I think it's going to be bigger going forward, but there's definitely a market for having these old school games. And it does definitely. seem that there's a lot of these like retro systems that come out you know that you load wrong every, every so month every month least. there's a new one there's a kickstarter or a indiegogo for one so i guess you can whip these together pretty cheaply is it a market though i mean it's still i think a fairly niche market mm-hmm. it's not like there's it, it's not gonna it's not a dominating no. market right, I think, right you know i think we'll, it would be a sad state of the video game industry if the most popular thing was was retro, even though we're here. You're saying that at Long Island Retro? I'm saying that, at, I know, my controversial stance at the Long Island Retro. But I think they're all, the reason why retro games are fun is because it's a look back upon what games were like while you still have the, the newest, latest, and greatest to play. I think it's an, it's an alternative. It's like, you know, it's like eating a Twinkie every six months. I I love Twinkies when I was a kid. I don't really like them too, too much now, but every now and again, it's like, I remember when I loved Twinkies. Right. But, uh, yeah. Should we take questions from the crowd? Yeah, sure. Are there, are there questions? any questions from the crowd? Anything about Twinkies? We have a microphone that we can set up. Yeah, there, there we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah, no, they're all prepared. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, my name's Mario. I've been listening to you guys for a very long time. Brought my wristband. Oh, oh nice. Back. I believe it's pronounced Mario. I was going to say no, he's no. Pronounced, <laughs> he pronounced, It's he definitely pronounced, pronounced Mario, and I got really angry at that podcast because I really want to correct you, Wombat. <laughs> um, and uh, we, you know, forgive you for believing that Mass Effect Andromeda is the game of the year. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my brother and I, we're going to Japan in November, and I was just thinking, like, is there something really video gaming in Tokyo or uh, another town that we should do? Because we really like to test it. So that just... um, yeah, I mean, you should go to Akihabara. That's that's pretty much the place you want to go. It's got a lot of arcades. They had, I mean, it used to have a lot of small gaming shops, but the town's gotten sort of built up over the years. And I don't know how many of those stores are still around. It's just as it gets more popular, the bigger stores move out, the smaller stores. Um, but there's still a bunch of arcades there. I met this guy in Akihabara a lot. Uh, played a bunch of games there. Um, but that's where you want to go, I think. There's a store called Super Potato that's really famous that has a ton of retro stuff. But And Trader. Trader is like where you go to buy like the used. And the camera store. And Yodobashi. Yodobashi, Yodobashi camera Yodobashi. is like the gigantic Best Buy type store. But you could spend a fair amount of time in Akihabara. There's like stores like on the second and third floors of buildings as well. Like I went to that right. Transformers thing that was like five stories up. That you Everything's would never know about. There's no space, so they build up. So you'll, you'll spend a lot of Kinda time. Kind of like there. this theater. Didn't you go back to Akihabara like three times or something to buy things? Yeah, I went to Akihabara three times yeah. in a week yeah. when, when I was <laughs> visiting you in Tokyo. Yeah, and you're going during a good time too, November. The weather will be good. You won't be sweating here. 
Cool. Thank you. Stuff off. Yeah, you got it. Any other questions? Oh, up there. We got a question. Way in the back. You're going to get a lot of exercise. <laughs> up those stairs. Oh, you met you halfway. That was nice. How you doing, guys? Hi. So, <laughs> I wouldn't have even thought about it, being that I'm at a retro expo. But you guys brought up the player unknown and the Twitch stuff. I wonder if you have any comments on the, the controversy around stream sniping and how people are getting banned from games for watching streams and using it to their advantage. Right. I think it's ridiculous. You think it's ridiculous that they're getting banned? Yeah. So if you don't know what that what stream sniping it is, is there are people who play these games on Twitch and they broadcast to a lot of people that really they have a ton of followers and have thousands of people watching. And then what happens is other players will find out these guys are streaming. They'll get into the game and they'll watch the broadcast so they'll know exactly where this player is and they have an unfair advantage to killing the player because they see exactly what he's doing. Uh, the new take on that is they just added car horns in the game, and now they troll these players in the game. They they get in the jeeps and they just follow the players around because they look at the stream, they see where these guys are at, and they just honk the horn as they circle around. Now these would most likely be you know the the, the Twitch streamers that are like being the followed. They're the stars. Yeah, these are people that are making a lot of money streaming. Well, I don't know how much money they're making, but they're. I making, mean, if they're making, well, they're if, they're, if it's an, if they're making an upwards their job, then yeah. they should just count their blessings and enjoy getting shot in the head. I think they're just gonna, they're, they'll have to figure this out. They'll have yeah. to figure out some way to only let certain people into those rooms or they do can, something. Yeah, you can set up. These guys have their access to private servers. They should be thrilled that their fans want to do that. But to answer uh, the question, I don't know that those are their fans. Though. I don't know that. Sure so, but should people be banned from the game for no. doing something that you're allowed to do? I mean, that you can do in the game. It's not if they don't put horns in the game if you don't want people driving around honking the horns. Right. They have to figure it out on the other end. It's not on the on the users. They've figured out how to do it in the first place yeah. without breaking any rules. Without banning people from right. playing the game, basically. Does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, just one little follow-up thing. Sure. Another thing that they were talking about is like those streamers, being that they have such huge followings, they should be expecting that and maybe putting a delay on their streams to prevent it. But then again, people are getting banned for doing it. So. Right. I mean, you if you put a delay on your stream, you can you know you can do that. But then when people in your chat room are you're trying to respond to them, everything's so far behind. It's really hard to keep up with your community. It's hard just to do it with the natural delay that comes with it. If you set even more delay, it just it's just hard to stay connected with your community. I mean, I only have like I'm lucky if I have 50 people watching me play, but these guys have you know thousands of people watching. But I don't know. It seems like you shouldn't be banned for doing it. Or find another game. I mean, you should also get a life if you're. This is how you get off. It's like honking your horn at. Oh, I thought you were gonna <laughs> say streaming for a living. I'm like, no, no, they're that's doing a good, just fine. Leave them fine. alone. That's fine. But if you if you have to troll people, I think that's you should probably find another hobby. What they need to do is they need to have like the streamer needs to have a friend that's also playing to get the guy. Right, kill that That's guy quick. To, to kill that guy quick. Just more, bigger to, and bigger circles yeah, of people honking horns. It's like the little old lady that swallowed a fly. Right, hopefully the troll is, is streaming yeah, his play too. Exactly. I like it. So you need to get a guy to follow that guy, and then they'll get a guy to follow that guy, and then the 100th guy will be the guy who wins every time. Or you just hire <laughs> a big guy with a sack of rusty doorknobs to show at the guy's house. You know, yeah, a little intimidation. for sure. Mm -hmm. might, that might be illegal. I'm not sure. Uh, any other questions? Oh, we got one down here. Come on down. Hey, um, my name is Dave. Uh, like Me too. You, like you guys' podcast. Mm -hmm. um, my question is: like recently, over the last few years, there've been like a lot of HD remakes of like Homeworld, Ducktales, Dragon Slayer, you know, Starcraft. Um, what HD remix? Like I'm, I'm hoping for like a Warcraft remix, but which one are you guys uh, hoping that that will come out next? You know, I looked at the Starcraft. I used to play a lot of Starcraft, and I saw the video of the HD remaster of it. And in my mind, that's what the game always looked like. <laughs> like I was like, isn't that what it looked like when I played it? And then you know, then I watched the video of what it really looked like. I'm like, oh yeah, it didn't really look like that, but. I don't feel like a desire that I need to go back. I mean, I played so I played it so much. I don't know that a lot of these games I need to go back and revisit. Um, 
but I'm sure World Warcraft is going to get one. I mean, it's like free money for these guys. Are there any HD remasters? I mean, Wombat loves playing HD remasters. That's your middle name. It is. It's that my, that's my parents' fault, though. Right. Um, oh, weird. <laughs> I'm trying to think, because now I'm on the spot. I feel like I was thinking, you know, I because we talked about this just a few minutes ago, I wouldn't mind, like, Castlevania HD remasters. Like, the, the first three games, the original. Oh, the original ones. The original. The first three Castlevania games remastered with, like, hand-drawn animation. That would be pretty baller. I would be. Who wouldn't want that? Show of hands. And a full round of applause. Orchestra score. Yeah, yeah. Full orchestra score. The whole deal. Turkeys, hand drawn turkeys. Who doesn't want that? Fishmen that you can actually see the face. I remember playing the first Castlevania game, and if you remember, the instruction booklet had all the enemies in it with these hand-drawn versions of what the enemies looked like. And I say look like in quotes, because in the game, they didn't look anything like that. But they look super cool in the instruction booklet. Right. No, I kind a lot of, of games did use yeah, that trick. Yeah, but how cool would it be to actually have a game where the enemies look like that? The version of Gaspar. Konami yeah. still making games? No, but someone should, maybe Nintendo should. Right. <laughs> bring it back full circle. But someone should, I mean, you know, kickstart it. I would play that. I, yeah, exactly. I think we all would. I don't, it's so hard to remember what hasn't been HD remade already. Um, I guess those old Disney Capcom games, not the afternoon ones, but Lion King and Aladdin, Aladdin. and all those. Yeah. Uh, Little Mermaid, all that stuff. I think that could be updated pretty well. I don't uh, know how impressive it would be today, though. Oh, it's not about impressive. I think those are just... Those two new platformers, I think, do okay when you do HD remakes of them because the hitboxes are easy to, to understand. Like, you can just swap out for better animation. Right. All right. Any other questions? Well, All right. Now there's like a whole bunch of people Good. getting, getting confident in their ability to ask questions. Yes. All right. Uh, oh, is this for you? We'll send it down there next. Um, two things. Uh, Wombat... I uh -oh. brought a copy of your favorite game for you to sign. Oh, oh nice. wow. <laughs> and it's a copy uh, of Overwatch. <laughs> in the spirit of the convention, if you guys were stuck on a stranded island and you could only have one retro game to play, what would it be and why? It has to be retro. What's considered retro? SNES and N64 back? And I'm hearing sure. lots of different. Nothing on a disc. Nothing on a disc. Nothing it has on to be a disc. Cartridge-based oh. game. Mm. If it was disc-based, I was going to say oh. Tony Hawk Two. Oh, but PlayStation Two. Eh, it was on N sixty four. But I don't want that version. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm. Uh, no. Uh, what about like Top Down Grand Theft Auto? I don't want Grand Theft Auto. That could be your answer. Yeah, I like that. I like games. You know. But that was was Waste that what was time. that? Oh, I guess PC. What yeah, it was PC. Because yeah. it was on PlayStation Two, wasn't it? Was it on PS? No, PS One, PS One, PSX. When you get back further than the PS One era, those games they're so short that it's it's hard to like oh, maybe like Tetris. Sure. Yeah. Not good for the desert island. Experience. Right, the desert island experience. You're gonna be. You're gonna just play the same thing, like the same couple hours over and over and over. Right. Um, I mean, so yeah, something like Tetris could work. Something like yeah, Doctor Mario. Something, something uh, you know, like the Game and Watch collection. Doctor Mario, you could at least have in the background with the music playing I do like while that you're music. Like, while you're losing your while, mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. while you're befriending your coconut. Right. I could see. I could speed her. Speed losing her. to the coconut multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> <to the coconut. laughs> you All beat right. me again, Wilson. Good game. Hello. Hello. Whoa. Hello. Um, as I uh, as I'm getting older and in a small apartment, I've been purging a lot of my old collection, yep. selling things off. I think I've come to terms with you know if I really want to play some games again, I'll probably end up getting an EverDrive at some point. Um, Shipwreck. Since you have such a large collection, why? Like when you get games now, are you getting? Are you just more in it for the hunt, or are you looking for like specific games now? I generally don't go out and look for a specific game when I'm buying because then I'm paying top dollar for it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I like to shop. I mean, we're part of Fair. a deal website, so that's why <laughs> I was here to begin with. Um, I feel so, like when you buy something, like it has two purposes. One, to buy it, but then you can talk about it on the podcast. Well, that's that's a that's little true. bit of it, too, but I like getting deals on stuff. That's why I go to Target every Monday to check their end caps. Um, I also like that there's value that you can resell it in the future because all this stuff just keeps going up in value right now. Um, so... I don't know, and I have a, I have fortunate to have a big enough house to like to house just, it all. Yeah, move to, to Ohio. Have, that's right. the biggest. That's tip the big we tip. Do. We have great targets. Pro tip: move to Ohio. Yeah, okay. and you won't have to sell your collection. Cool, but you have to live in Ohio. Right. Yeah, I got rid of most of my stuff. But you don't have to live in Ohio. I know. <laughs> I had to move around a lot, but okay. One more question. Finish big. This better be a good question or we're going to laugh you out of the room. Hi. Hello. Oh, Hi. That's weird. Okay. This is not really a question but more of a comment. Uh-oh. I really agree with you that Overwatch is a terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> I played it when it first came out and I had no idea like what to do. It's not even like a game. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. no there's no story. You just run around aimlessly They're shooting. They're scoring. They're scoring. Dude, how much did Wombat pay you to ask that question? I cannot tell you that information. Right. Okay. We uh you have a lot of people who agree with you. Well, thank you everybody for coming. This is a lot of fun. Um <laughs> I'm still laughing at the Overwatch guy. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, even him. Thank you. Uh, follow us on Twitter at GPD, at New Wombat, at Shipwreck, at Video Game Deals, of course. Uh, and I think that's it. Bread's done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, guys. Uh, coming up next in- Mattel's Battlestar Galactica Collection. You can imagine the Imperious Leader commands the Cylon Centurion to capture Daggett. Make Daggett lead us to the human. You can imagine Daggett fears Ovion, the enemy with insect arms. Lieutenant Starbuck. Yes, Commander Adama. Prepare for secret mission. Each figure sold separately. Daggett, Imperious Leader, Cylon Centurion, and Ovion. Each figure sold separately, not for use with other Battlestar Galactica toys. New from Mattel. Is new from Mattel. Is new from Mattel.